Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Beginning of the book of the Revelation, Revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified it by his angel under John. John will be in the spirit of Elijah. And that is the prophet that will restore all things of restitution of all things. Why is that important? Well, Jesus stated there in Matthew 17, was coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration, where he was seen along with Elijah and Moses and taking Peter, James, and John and was transfigured before those apostles. When they came down from the mount, they saw Jesus only coming down from the mountain. The disciples of Jesus said, why do the disciples of John say that Elijah must first come? Now, most understand in the last day work of the ministry, there is a restoration, a restitution of all things of faith. They were coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, what we were called for from the beginning. In Ephesians 1, to gather all things together in one in Christ Jesus, which is a mystery of God's will from the foundation of the world. Whom he did foreknow, them he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. And those that he did predestinate, them he called. Them that he called, he justified. Them that he justified, he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Why? To bring many sons unto glory. Those that he foreknew, them he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. We're called for that great high calling of God in Christ. Very few understand it's not just a pre-tribulation rapture or mid-trib. That is uh, to the glory of God, speaking wisdom to them that are of full age. He speaks wisdom to them that are perfect, as Paul stated to the church at Corinth. So this podcast is for those who are not just newly born children or little children, newborn babes, little children, but not only young men, that Christ in them has been formed to young men with the word of God being strong in them, and they've overcome the wicked one. But we're talking fathers, full grown to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ into a perfect man, growing up into Jesus in all things, in all truth, being not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. For it's for the work of the ministry that we are all called for. Paul said, I'm not and have not already attained, neither am I already perfect. But I'm reaching forth to those things which are before, forgetting those things which are behind. And then said, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, and as many as be perfect be thus minded. That's the mind of Christ. And in Revelation 7, we must be sealed with the word of God by the Holy Ghost until that day of redemption where we redeemed the whole creation moaning, groaning, and pain to be delivered into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. And not only they, but we also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, do groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. So in this podcast, we're going to take a look at Revelation 4, Revelation 5. Now, we're told by the nominal Christianity that in Revelation 4, verse 1, is the rapture. It, as the book of the Revelation, is built upon the Hebrew, the Hebraic design of the Hebrew ABC theory. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew ABCs, and there are 22 chapters in the book of the Revelation, not in chronological order, but as a Hebraic design following the design of the Hebrew aloft through the Tav. In chapter 1, we're going to see the aloft is the supreme, omnipotent, almighty God who is one. 
chapter 1 of Revelation 1, we see in Revelation 1, 8, that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty. Then we go to chapter 2. We should see a bait there. Beth, house, Bethel, house of God, Bethlehem, house of bread. We see the house. We see Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira in chapter 2, which is Jesus in the bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, in the house of God, the church of the living God. Then chapter 3, we're going to see a gamel, a camel, and that is to bridge over. And we see there the Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And for the completion of the other three churches, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Daleth, the fourth letter of the Hebrew, Hebrew ABC area, is a door. And the first thing we see in Revelation 4, verse 1, a door opened in heaven, a voice of a trumpet, talk with, talking with me, saying, Come up hither, and I will show you things which will come to pass hereafter. That's King James Version. Well, that's not a rapture. It is a revelation of the throne room given in a higher revelation to the church of the living God, not as newborn babes, not as little children that know that he's the father, not as young men because the word of God is strong in them and they've overcome the wicked one, the Christ in them, but full age fathers. I write to you, fathers, because you've known him that's from the beginning, 1 John 2, 12-14. Well, now we're coming to that full measure of the statue of Jesus. And it's the things that must shortly come to pass. These are things that we grow up in, which is the fullness and the restitution or restoration of all things of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, the things seen are temporal, the things which are not seen are eternal. And John is being lifted up, not raptured in a bodily resurrection, but lifted up in revelation to bring him into the throne room. And that throne room revelation is a much higher revelation than the Pentecostal revelation that we see in the New Testament in the book of Acts. The book of Acts has no amen on it because it's still in operation and will come to pass as just the word of God states it will. The foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, now, we're, we're focusing on Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. Now, a person that is not a believer, that is not to this stage yet, it's better for them to seek the Lord and not to try to bite off of those of a full age because the newborn babes are not skillful in the word of righteousness. We see that in Hebrews 5 when Paul is discussing Melchizedek, Melech, King, Zadok, righteous. The Melchizedek ministry is a ministry there that Jesus in the fullness of time will bring his church to the measure of the stature of himself, a perfect mirror image to where he will present unto himself a perfect spotless, blameless church without spot or blemish. This is the final calling of God in the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are told for the most part that we are not to read the book of the revelation because it has nothing to do with the Christian, which is diabolically false. It has everything to do with the Christian because it's written to the believers the ones that are coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So it is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the Antichrist, Jesus Christ, that God gave unto him to show unto his servants, not Israel, the servants of God, the church of the living God. 
that are going on to perfection. And we see that it was given to him to show unto his servants, the servants of God, things which must shortly come to pass. And he said and signified it. He sent, that word is sent, angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, to seal the servants of God, not Israel, the servants of God in their foreheads. Now, that revelation sealing is where the church is now. God is performing that now, as he stated he would. It's not so and, and keep plowing and breaking up fallow ground, sowing to ourselves in mercy, mercy, mercy reaching, uh, reaping in righteousness, but it is coming to the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus and to a perfect church that will be literally gleaned from the earth in the rapture, not before the work of God. When God has performed his whole work upon Zion, the church as well as the nation Israel, then and only then will he put in the sickle and reap the harvest. And Israel, after the flesh, the nation of Israel, will be saved in one day, just as Isaiah 66 said, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall a nation be birthed at once? That's the nation Israel. Now, true, Israel become a nation May 14, 1948. But what is in store for her is a grander, where she will, Israel, will be blessed of all the nations in the earth, and every nation will be blessed in Israel. That is the millennial reign that God promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, the patriarchs. But before then, there is a great work to those that have an ear to hear, to understand the truth of the word of God and where we are now and the progression of the proceeding word of God, we are in that Revelation 4 and 5 throne room now. God is opening that now. It's a higher revelation than a Pentecostal revelation. It's throne room revelation. And it's much higher in glory. It's that of the fathers. And the fathers that we find in Malachi 4. Remember my servant Moses, behold, I send you Elijah. el e -Yah. Elohim is Jehovah. It's a one God message. That not a trinity, but one. The revelation of Christ who is one. He is that spirit in all offices. That revelation that God is giving now we must enter into, or the Lord states he will smite the earth with a curse. We have to be obedient. There he says, Behold, I send you Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. That is the Elijah ministry, and it goes on and tells us what that is. He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse, God said. The fathers are full grown, weaned from the milk and of full age, and they are, understand, the Melchizedek ministry. The newborn babes are unskillful in the word of righteousness, and neither indeed can be because they're not full grown yet. They have to be through the stages of growing up into Jesus and all things after the in, inner man. Though the outward man is perishing, yet that inward man is being renewed day by day. As we see what the present proceeding word of God by which every believer lives by, we must pay attention to the leading of the Holy Ghost because those that are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of God. In Revelation 4, we find that we are in that throne room revelation. We see in verse 1 of Revelation 4, John states, 
after I looked and behold a door that daileth. The fourth letter of the Hebrew ABC theory by which it is designed in the whole book of the Revelation. The each letter being the design and not in chronological order, but in a design for that Jesus is the Allah through the Ta. He is the uh, Alpha to the Omega. He is the A to the Z of all that God is. And there's not another. In Revelation 4, verse 1, we find the daylight, the door open in heaven. We're going into the throne room revelation, a much higher revelation. Now, let's see what's there. What is the Lord showing us? What is the Spirit saying to the church now? After this, John said, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice, the voice of God, the first voice, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. Now, God does nothing and says he warns it, the people. Now, God will do nothing, say he show it to his servants, the prophets, the church of the living God. God in sundry chambers and divers manners, spake unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son, by whom he's appointed heir of all things. That is to us now. And as a trumpet, it's a move of God, a new thing he's doing. Talking with me, with those that are in that last day move in the preceding word of God. John is in the spirit of Elijah. We're going to see that John is going to eat that little book out of the angel's hand. It's going to be sweet to his mouth as honey, bitter to his belly, but he must again prophesy, preach before many nations, kindreds, tongues, and kings. We see that in Revelation 10. This is what he is seeing and relating on to us in the last day work of the ministry for the perfecting of the saints of God. That trumpet's talking with John, which is given to us, the servants of God, things which must shortly come to pass. We cannot just throw them aside and count it as nothing, saying, well, it doesn't apply to us. It's not applicable to us. Of course it is. And the voice of a trumpet, the true voice of God, not a cornet, a suck bolt, salty heart, little dulcimer, but a trumpet call, a piercing, distinct clarion call of God, can't be missed, says it was talking with him. And John said, come up hither, and I will shew thee, show thee things which must be hereafter things that must follow. These are things of faith. This is not the bodily resurrection of the first resurrection. This is throne room revelation that must be entered into. And immediately, he was not in heaven, but he was in the spirit. Very important. He's not bodily resurrected. He's in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now, he's having the throne room revelation there. And looking there, he's going to see the throne room, Jesus sitting on that throne as the only true God, not a trinity, not a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in three different persons. There's only one throne in heaven, and Jesus sits on that throne, and he is glorified with the Father in that throne, Revelation 3.21. So God is revealing the true revelation, which has been literally overlooked for many, many years. Disputings about how the Godhead is and how it works. But God, as we come to the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus, gives us a per, pure, perfect revelation of Jesus Christ. To know him in the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost and who he is. And that is 
that he alone is God. There's not another. Jesus states, I and my Father are one. We're one in the same spirit. And he also states in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, the Father of glory, you shall die in your sins. Very explicitly stating that he is the Father. He is that spirit revealed in the days of his flesh in a humiliated state to be our kinsman redeemer. But afterwards, in death, burial, and resurrection, in his resurrection, he has a glorified body. But 40 days later, he is taken to heaven and he ascends to heaven, glorified with the Father's own self, set down with the Father in his throne, Revelation 3.21. He has been made both Lord and Christ, Acts 2, 36, that let all the house of Israel know assuredly that same Jesus whom you crucified, that man, God hath made him both Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, and Christ in you, the Holy Ghost, Christ. He is the Lord. He is Christ, the only true God in eternal life. That is the revelation of Jesus. He is that blessed and only potentate, the omnipotent, almighty God, 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16. The sin Jesus Christ, the blessed and only potentate, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach into, nor see, nor can see. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus states coming out of the tomb, all power, is given to me in heaven and in earth that did not leave the Father powerless. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty God. Now, that's the first thing we have to understand and have the foundation of Christ, that Christ is God in every office of that spirit. Now, assuming that a believer has come to that revelation and has the foundation now we're going from newborn babes to little children, knowing that he is the father. Because I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake, and you've known the father. You know that Jesus is the father. First John 2, 12 through 14. He said, then I'll write unto you, young man, because the word of God is strong in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. They're the overcomers in Revelation, the second and the third chapter. Now we're coming to Revelation 4 and 5. These are fathers. These are the ones that John states in 1 John 2, 12, verse 13 and 14. I write unto you fathers because you have known him. That's from the beginning. He states it again. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him. That's from the beginning that has eyes before and behind of the living creatures, the Zoe, or the beast before the throne of God. They are the full-grown Christian that has been weaned from the milk and is a full age on the strong meat of the word. Having their senses exercised, their body discern both good from evil. These are the ones that God will use for the work of the ministry in Revelation 6, the beast that will literally preach the everlasting gospel to all the world, saying, come and see and proclaim the gospel. From the white horse rider to the red horse rider to the black horse rider to the pale horse rider. This is what's happening now. God is sealing those for the great work of the ministry. John is being elevated. They're in the spirit, not a rapture, in the spirit, to see this throne room revelation. And there, notice he says, there's one that sat on the throne and he tells us what he looks like. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper. The jasper stone was on Naphtali, which was the last stone in the breastplate of the high priest according to the oath to the tribes. The first one was a sardius or a sardine stone in the Greek or a sardius in the Hebrew, which had Judah, praise, celebrated. Here, the first is made last, and the last is first, just as Jesus said it would. 
And he that was to set, that is on the throne, was to look upon like a jasper. That's on Naphtali, which is my wrestling, or the cross. The first thing we see in heaven is a cross. And a sardine stone. Sardia stone, which brings forth what? Judah, praise, celebrated. We joy in that cross and celebrate Jesus in his death, burial, and ultimate resurrection. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Why an emerald? Well, we see that an emerald there, a stone, had Simeon written on it. To hear, to understand what the rainbow. The rainbow has seven colors, but there's various hues in infinite colors and hues from starting with the scarlet red, then from the red, it goes from the orange and then yellow, green. Then we go to from the green to blue, indigo, and purple. Seven colors there. It starts from the work of the cross, the blood shed that Jesus shed, his precious, righteous, holy blood from that red, then all the way to the green that gives us eternal life. Then it goes from there, the green to blue, which is a heavenly purple, king of kings and lord of lords, and then that purple, indigo to purple. That is where we're king of kings, includes the body of Christ, coming to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. It's the full work that Jesus did written in the heavens. As we see that, he's given us that full understanding, the emerald, Simeon, to hear and understand the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow, and exactly the work that he did, Jesus alone, to save us. And round about the throne, Who's round about it? He's seeing there, round about that throne, were four and twenty seats. Four and twenty thronus, thrones. And upon the seats, I saw four and twenty elders, they had never cast presbyteros, that never calls an angel their elders. Never. He says, four and twenty elders uh, clothed in white raiment, never angels. It's always the, the body of Christ. And we see that in uh, First Chronicles 24, 1, uh, the four orders of the priesthood uh, there uh, that, you know, that are the priests owned over God's and uh, the tabernacle. And everyone had on their heads crowns of gold, they are pleasing in God's sight. And we found there in Revelation 6, 1, and a white horse rider, that he that sat on him was given a crown. Now, that crown is a stephanos. It is a, a toxon. The Greek word there is toxon, which is a fabric ornamental bow. It is a bow that you give to the victor after he has won the battle. But the, the beast, the living creatures that are proclaiming this gospel and the white horse rider going out over all the world for a witness unto all nations, the Lord gives us, the body of Christ, a toxon, a crown. And notice there's no error there. It's a bow. It's an ornamental, ornamental bow given to the, the victor normally after he has triumphed. But God, our Lord Jesus Christ, gives it to us before we even start the battle. And a crown, Stephanos, was given him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. The devil's not conquering there. We're more than conquerors. It's always used of the body of Christ. Then it goes to the red horse rider, his conquest. Peoples, there's a sword there. Jesus stated, you think I come to send peace on the earth, but rather a sword to send a man at variance with his son. Father against the son, mother against the daughter, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. A man's house will be, a man's foes will be those of his own household. 
Well, that's exactly what happens to the red horse. After the white horse, the proclamation of the gospel goes out, conquering and to conquer, then it immediately puts a sword in the earth. Some believe, some do not. And then we find a black horse rider. That is a, sp- a set of scales, uh, balances in uh, his hand. And a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see that you hurt not the oil on the wine. Well, three measures of barley is the Passover harvest, and that would be Passover unleavened bread and first fruits of three measures for a penny. Then we go to Pentecost, only one feast there. That'll be the feast of wheat, measure of wheat for a penny. You can still buy the truth and sell it not. But then the ones that come to the oil and wine, the fruit harvest in tabernacles, not Pentecostal, but tabernacles, these hurt not the oil and the wine because they are full grown and uh, pleasing to the Lord's sight. They've received the word of God and they are sealed. Don't hurt them. And we're going to see in that fifth trumpet in Revelation, the ninth chapter in the fifth trumpet, that that abyss, the bottomless pit, is opened, and it comes out of Polyon and Abaddon, the destroyer. And it will be given to hurt men five months. Only those who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. God's sealing us now. The ones that want the word of God in the depth, in the truth, going not this newborn babies, not little children, not young men that are overcomers, but kill the fullness of the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ. And those will be the only ones sealed in Revelation 7, the ones that are full grown. Now, the ones that are full grown are the fathers. But we have a little sister. What will be done for her when she's asked for? Does God just let her die? No, if she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. If she be a door, we will enclose her with cedar, the cedar work, uncovering the cedar work, which is Zephaniah 2. These things are for the mature Christian that are full grown, that God will use and expect these fathers to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers to bring all into one mind, one accord to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That's where we are now. Well, he sees those. And round about that throne of four and 20 elders, this is the, the church, the elders of the church that are made to set together in heavenly places we see in Ephesians 1. That we, the body of Christ, are made to set together in heavenly places now through the finished blood work of Jesus Christ. We've gone through the veil, and we have boldness to enter that before the throne. And here they are, the four and 20 elders. These are not newborn babies. These are not little children. They're not young men. They're elders. They have reached that fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus These are the ones that God will be called on for the priesthood and kings, priests that will move in the world for this gospel to preach to all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. That's what God is doing now, or Lord Jesus Christ, to those that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Now, there's four and 20 seats, four and 20 elders, with the crowns upon their heads of Gold. Now, notice that it says right after that, and how do the throne proceed? Lightnings, that's a revelation of the word of God. Thunderings, that's the understanding of the word. And voices, that's individual voice to every individual believer to do his will, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God that worketh in us both the will and the do of his good pleasure, proving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for each one of us is. And it says there, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, we know that in 
uh, Isaiah 11, 1, 2, and 3 gives us that sevenfold spirit of God there in perfection. Notice before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Those are the knowledges of God that we must, we must all enter into. Likened to crystal, that means no spot or blemish, in the midst of the throne, in that midst of that throne, right in the power of it all, a crystal sea without spot, without blemish, perfect in all of its ways and the knowledges of, knowledges of God. Round about the throne, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Somebody said, but that'd be an awful sight. No, the eyes are the eyes of revelation. It does not mean that they have just full of eyes before and behind and it's nothing but eyes in this creature. No, it speaks there in the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus as fathers that know him that's from the beginning, that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The fathers know that word. That word from the Allah through the Tav is the work of the ministry and the fathers know it and will proclaim this everlasting gospel in the fullness of it to all the world for witness unto all nations. It's the final call of God for those nations to repent and be saved. Here, they are the ones that are full of eyes of revelation before and behind. Before, that is what's before them and behind and the historical part of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. The eyes of a revelation being opened on, knowing our eyes with thyself, giving the ears to hear and hearts to believe the word of God. Those are the Zoe, the beast, the living creatures before the throne of God. They are the ones that will preach this everlasting gospel to all the world. Now, it tells us the first beast was like a lion. Notice, like a lion. The second beast, like a calf. The third beast had a face as a man, not like a man, as a man. Why? Because it is Jesus, the head, and we, the body of the Christ, making one perfect man. Don't you know that all run in a race, but only one winneth the prize, therefore run that we may obtain. This is a man caught up to God and to his throne. Paul saw it. One there said, in the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. And heard things unlawful for a man to speak. Why? Because the cherubim of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which now, Paul said, we cannot speak particularly. Why? Because in Hebrews 9, 5, it's the work of the ministry in the last days, not Pentecost, but tabernacles. Tabernacleist will be the ones that are in this latter reign of the Holy Ghost in the spirit of Elijah that goes to the full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ. Well, the ones that are sealed, the ones that as Enoch was pleasing to God and he seals those in Revelation 7. Those are the only ones that will be able to stand who shall be able to stand? The servants of God. That is not the national nation Israel, national Israel. That is the church beyond any shadow of a doubt, the church of the living God. You, my friend, if you are weaned from the milk and of full age, having your senses exercised thereby to discern both good from evil, God is calling you for the work. Find here the face of a lion, like a lion, like a calf, but a face as a man. That's the Son of Man revelation. In uh, John 3, 13, no man has ascended up to heaven. Not Enoch, not Elijah, no one. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. He used the Son of Man. Why? Because John tells us in his gospel, 
the Son of Man, him hath God the Father sealed. That's secreted, seal, fragizo, the Greek word there to seal or to have authority or ownership, authentic, the ones that truly are and belong to God. That's the Son of Man. The Son of Man is the kingdom office of the Spirit. The Son of God is redemption office of the Spirit. You cannot be saved except through the Son of God. The kingdom office is Jesus the head and we the body of the Christ and all judgment is given to the Son of Man because he is the Son of Man. And that means that the body of Christ will be God's instruments of judgment. It will be God's battle axe. It will be the ones called of God in the last days to bring the word of God, not only in redemption miracles of Jesus, because he said, these works that I do shall you do also. Those are redemption works. Jesus never killed anybody. He healed the sick, cleansed the leper, raised the dead, cast out devils, opened blind eyes, loosed the dumb tongue, the lame walk, and the captive went free. Blessed is he whomsoever is not offended in me. Jesus stated that. But then on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was Moses. And Moses, remember my servant Moses, he's in this last day work of the ministry. And what are those? Judge, Moses did judgment miracles, famishing every god of Egypt and destroyed every god in Egypt. It was not Moses doing those judgment miracles. It was Christ, Jesus himself, the spirit who Jesus is. That's the reason you see Jesus only on that Mount of Transfiguration. But then there's Elijah. And Elijah did kingdom miracles. They are miracles of restoration. It will not rain in the days of his prophecy, three and a half years, 42 months. He did uh, miracles there that we find will be done by the body of Christ in Revelation 11. Because Jesus stated, these works that I do shall you do also. Well, what works did he do? Well, he healed the sick, cleansed the leper, raised the dead, cast out devils, opened blind eyes, loose the dumb tongue, the lame walk and captive went free. Those are redemption miracles, showing that he is improving. He is of resurrection and the life who divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, that we, the body of Christ, will work the same miracles. Not through our own power, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. But he said, greater works than these shall you do. Well, what greater works? Well, the judgment miracles of Moses, we will do. The ones that are pleasing to God and are sealed to do so, as well as the Elijah restoration miracles of Elijah, that we will do those kingdom miracles that Elijah did. Greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. So it'll be the redemption miracles of Jesus. We're working at the same time through the body of Christ as the judgment miracles that Moses did through the body of Christ and the kingdom miracles of, re, of the restoration miracles that Elijah did through the body of Christ in Revelation 11 for a time, times a half, three and a half years, 42 months, 1,203 score days. That's what the Lord is preparing us for now. For those that have a ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Not a natural ear, but the ear to the Spirit. Here we have that uh, beast, that Zoe, that living creature, like a lion. Second beast, like a calf. And fourth beast, like a flying eagle. But that third beast had a face as a man, not like a man, as a man. That's that son of man revelation right there. Neighbor, you're called for it. And the four beasts, each of them had six wings, not four. Why? Because they've reached Elohim status. That, why? Two that cover their eye, two that cover their feet, just as we see in Isaiah 6. And with two, they did fly. A proclamation of the gospel all over the world. What is that six wings? It's Elohim status. What do you have wings for? To fly upon the wind of doctrine. And the wings, there are six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. 
that eyes are the eyes of revelation of the word of God. And they rest not day and night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. The Lord God Almighty is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God, which was and is and is to come. Why is he saying was, is and is to come? Because that which God has done, is doing, and will do, is and is to come. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, a present imperfect tense still doing it. And God will be honored in glory and it will be holy, holy, holy. The divine nature that God has will be there. Uh, they're actually coming and being partaker. The body of Christ being a partaker of that divine nature. She sees through these great and exceeding great and precious promises whereby we, the body of Christ, are made partakers of his divine nature. Holy, holy, holy. Why is that uh, so important to the beast? Because it was and is and is to come through not only what the Lord is happening, but as proclaiming it all through the four and 20 elders and the four beasts. The holiness coming to the measure of the statue of Jesus, partaking of his divine nature. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. Not that God, they're guarding God's holiness. God doesn't need anybody to guard his holiness. God is God. And there's no angel that can guard a holiness, not the beast, not the four and 20 elders. They are partaking of that holiness. And they are the ones that will proclaim this everlasting gospel to all the world for a witness unto all nations. Now, neighbor, we're going to get into you, the believer. If you are at a place you're seeking God in the depth of that word, this is for you. If they're on the other hand, taking this word of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and adding things to it, the plagues of this book will be added to you. Or you take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, then your name will be taken out of the holy city and blotted out of the book of life. So it's a warning for all of us that we want to proceed very cautiously and very humbly before this word of God and the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're dealing with the heartstrings of God and the seven seals that the Lamb has opened, uh, the line of the tribe of Judah, the, uh, the, the father of David that is now being revealed to us. He's the root of David. He is that spirit. Now, what we're going to get into the next time, there is Revelation 5, verse 1 and 2, and what it means when he's opening the seals of this book, and this book is in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, and why it's written on the front and the back side. Don't miss it. If you are called for this and God is dealing with you, bearing witness with your spirit, the spirit of God bearing witness with your spirit, then tune into these podcasts. Think about joining with this Dennis Beard ministry, the DVM team, and proclaiming this gospel to all the world. We have taken it to Africa. We have over a thousand ministers now that are in it and begging for more. We there as well as those ministers there in Africa, also in India, a great move of God there, taking the land and the fire of the Holy Ghost. But what about America? Three quarters of our downloads, of over 50,000 downloads, have been in America since 2019. But we've heard from very little of anyone in America. Why? Because most are in a denominal church, and they're satisfied where they are and say, well, I'll take a look at it, but maybe. Well, we don't procrastinate. If you know that you know, and God bearing witness with your spirit and the Holy Ghost, with your spirit, 
your conscience bearing you witness in the Holy Ghost, then please contact me where we will work together. The body of Christ has to come together. It will not be through a denomination. God has never used a denomination for a last great day work or any work. He's always used people that will seek him, prayer and fasting, and then move in obedience for the saving of their souls. The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. And we must go on to the measure of the statue of Jesus Christ in all things and all truth. Tune into the podcast. The next time we'll get into Revelation 5 and the opening of that book there, taking that book out of the hand from the Spirit of God going through to the body of Christ there through the Lord Jesus Christ and what it means to us written with on the front and on the back side. And we'll find it's going to be right there with Ezekiel, the second and third chapter, that it will be lamentation, mourning, and woe, bitterness to the belly. Well, if you there have prayer requests, please let us know. We're praying for each and every one of all of us to come to the measure of the statue of Jesus and be presented blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before then, is a great work. God has spoken to us there while in Transmara, Kenya, Africa, speaking at a Messiah tribal church. We had a visitation from our Lord Jesus Christ and a two-hour visitation. We couldn't even walk. But the bottom line was, he said, seal my people by my word. Even as I send my angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, so send I you. We're nothing. He's everything. If God dealing with you, neighbor, contact me. There, the uh, information, contact information is on, str- on your screen. And I look forward to meeting. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus. You that know that God has a great work in the last days in the work of the ministry. Know that there is a sealing of God's people before that great and terrible day of the Lord come and then Elijah ministry to the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus and this gospel being preached to all the world for witness unto all nations. You that feel the witness of the Holy Ghost bearing witness with your spirit, please contact me so we can work together. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus.